Hey guys, good morning. It's January 22nd, 2021, and we are going to have a big show today. We're going to go over Socialites Block 16. We have a trunk show of books. We have lots of sew along blocks. I have so much stuff for you guys, so I hope you can stay the full time that I'm here. Um, we're going to start with our block 16 in Socialites. That is a free sew along where you get the free block pattern for three inch, six inch, and nine inch size. Today's block was designed by Carrie Nelson and it's called Friendship. And so I have my pattern. I got out of my book, so I'm going to put that aside. And this block is very, um, I would say it's it's hard, let's just say that. Um, we have it labeled as intermediate, which it could be, but it has a lot of pieces. So I'm gonna show you some tricks today on how I'm able to get my blocks more accurate. So here's my th three blocks. And I use the Homestead Collection by April Rosenthal. And so you can really see when you do a small block, see how the little dots get lost? And then over here, the dots really pop. So it's that's a good way to see the difference between a small print, how, it, how a small print, even though it's small, gets really small. So these are my three blocks. I pressed all of mine open. And you can see that it gets kind of... It gets kind of wobbly right there because there's so many seams. So sometimes even though you press open, see how it's really flat here? It doesn't get as flat here and that's okay. It'll work. So these are my three blocks. And of course you could put like a motif in here as long as it didn't take away from out here. Um, and if you did that, you would, you would probably lose the effect of this star. So that is there. I'm gonna show you Carrie's blocks real quick. She made two blocks and she made six inch blocks and you know, Carrie loves scraps. So these are all fabrics from her stash and they're all scrappy. And she changed one of the, go back. In the corner where those are half square triangles, she kind of changed that up and use two fabrics in that half square triangle. Do you see that? See the purple and the yellow? Yes. So that's a way that you can change it up and she did that on the top left one. I'm gonna show you the other blocks that we have made. This one is the Quotation Collection by Zen Chic and it's three inch size and Teresa made that one. Deborah made this one using figs and shirtings. So these are three inches. For six inches, we made a folktale block. Terry made that one. And Sue made this one with shine on fabric. And you can see you're really getting a different look. And right here is where you can tell that Miss Rosie divided her fabric. And you kind of just have to be a magician to do that. I mean, Definitely too hard to explain. Maybe I can do it one day. And then the last block is by Angel and she used the Cider Collection with a grunge. So let's jump into the block. This one is gonna be super complicated because I'm gonna be doing some stuff with you guys that I haven't done before. So the first thing we're gonna focus on is, I'm gonna use this block as reference, A and D, which is right here. So you're making two half square triangles that go on the corner. If you are doing the three inch side, you need one inch half square triangle paper, which would be this size, and you just need one square. If you're doing the six inch block, you need two inch triangle paper, which is right here, it's H200, and you need one square. We're gonna do the nine inch block and so we are going to do the three inch finish and we're gonna cut one square and that's what we're gonna do for ours. Also Christopher Jolly 77 says, hi mom. Hi Christopher. 
<laughs> he wanted me to say hi to him. You're supposed to be in school. Okay, tell me how Will's doing in the spelling bee right now. Give me an update. So when you start a brand new triangle roll, this bottom part, don't use this one because it doesn't have, you can see that it's crooked. You're going to lose that first one. But I don't want to lose this one also. So what I'm going to do is trim that off and then I'll just trim this off. And I just use washi tape and just put a little tape here. So I need that for my A and D. My previous blocks that I made on camera the last two weeks are right here. And I'm trying to do the same background but different colors. So today, I'm gonna be doing a green. So right here, I'm just gonna put my, my two fabrics are right sides together. I ironed before we started and I starched. So what I usually do is I'll just put the paper on and then cut. And they're already right sides together. Peyton Jolly says, Piggy says hi. And then he also said he's passed the first round. Good. Okay, so my son will, they had, uh, what do you call it, like eliminations and spelling bee? And he, oh, yeah. he got to the next round. So now he's doing a live spelling bee, but we can't go. Oh. You can watch online, but you can't go. So oh. they're watching him and watching me. And I think they're supposed to be in school. But their teacher, I think their teachers, because their brothers are in the spelling bee, let them out of class. Uh, and Christopher Jolly 77 said, tell my mom I'm on break and Will's doing good. Okay, good. Okay. So right here, I'm on this step. So this right here is this. I'm gonna put this aside. And this block uses eight flying geese. And if you would like to make them the traditional way, you would just follow the instructions for E and C. And I've done flying geese a million times on the channel, but today we're gonna do them different. We're gonna use our brand new flying geese paper. If you're doing a three inch block, we don't have paper for that, but for the six inch block, you can use the one by two paper. But for the nine inch block, you can use the one and a half by three paper. So the way that you know what paper to use is my size unfinished is two by three and a half. To find out your finished size, you take half inch away. So that gives you one and a half by three. And we need to make eight flying geese and each paper makes two. So we need four papers. And then I'm gonna put this aside. And before I go to that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my three, three and a half inch squares for my B, which is right here. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna cut for here. So three, three and a half inch. And I'm gonna put my little sticky note that I have here. So to save fabric, I'm going to try to get three, three and a half from this. So that's not long enough and I don't want to cut that crooked. So I'm going to do another one. So I just trim the edge three and a half. And it's kind of hard to cut on camera, so I can do this at home much faster. 
actually here, the three and a half is missing. Oh. Yep. So usually I would just take the three and a half inch ruler. I know where it is. And just cut it, but we don't have it here. So I'm gonna do this, use this ruler. I might've actually cut that one wrong now. No, I did, I did it right. So normally I would use this ruler to, so that I wouldn't have to think. And you can save this for a little one and a half inch scrap if you want. So these are my three squares. I'm gonna put those aside over here. And here we need to make eight flying geese with the darker print on the inside. I'm trying to find the pad of paper that I had. Oh, it's right here. No, the pad that um, it goes on. I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is, sorry. So on here, you want to always keep the lid. So like the inside lid or inside cover. And this tells you what to cut. So for this one, I actually won't even pay attention to what I need to cut for the fabric one because to make it easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just trim this little, this little guy off. I'm just gonna trim the edges off. You're gonna trim on those solid lines so you don't really need these dotted lines. The reason the paper is a little bit bigger is because when that's what the printer required us to have. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And I have four rectangles. So I need four pieces this size. Now you can look at that and cut that, or you can do the little method I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna take this fabric, fold it in fours on one end, and chop that off. Mm. And I hardly have any waste, and I, hadn't had, I don't have to think. So there's my four pieces just to save time. And Christopher Jolly said to let you know that we'll got to the next round. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna take this away and I will cut this up for my scrap bin. I'm not gonna do that today because I've done that the last two weeks. So here I need to cut the fabrics that are gonna go here. And for each square, you need two three inch squares cut on the diagonal. So because I'm doing four pieces, four times two is eight, so I'm gonna cut eight three inch squares and cut them on the diagonal. So I'm gonna use this. I can probably get eight from this. And these actually don't have to be cut perfectly because we're using this paper and the paper is forgiving. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So we'll cut them on the diagonal. And you can see when I cut, I didn't cut precisely because it doesn't matter. So now we're ready to put our block together. So I'm gonna kind of neaten everything up. So these are my bees. So I'm gonna label these as my bees and just put them out of the way. This, we're ready to sew on the dotted lines. So I'm just gonna do that real quick before we start this so I don't confuse you. Mm -hmm. So I just have a foot that is open toe where I can see my stitches. I'm gonna go down to like a 1.5 stitch length and stitch on the dotted line.
And anytime I am making half square triangles, I do use triangles on a roll, triangle paper. So for here, I'm gonna just cut two sides at one time. Cut on the center. Remove the paper. And we're gonna iron this real quick before we move on, just so I don't confuse you too much. So when I'm ironing, I'm just gonna put the iron down, set my seam, press to one side, then press open. Some people ask why I don't just press open, and I'll show you. If I was just gonna press open here, I'm gonna burn myself. Because you've gotta really press with your fingers to get that down, and I don't wanna burn myself. So, I just learned to not burn myself. And here, you can cut your little dog ears off before you press open to save a step in a second. And then after it's not hot anymore, oh, I almost burned myself right there. I just press open, leave it, leave the iron on there about five seconds. And now I'm going to put these two together with heat, put my clapper on there and set it aside. And now I'm going to show you how you use this new paper. This paper is awesome. It's going to give you accurate results. So the first thing you want to do is you want your, your print fabric right side down. So I'm going to put those right side down there. To make this go faster, what I like to do is take, you can take any ruler, but I use the out of quarter, and I'm going to crease both, all four little um, triangles or whatever you want to call them, all four corners. And I'm going to crease them. That'll make it a lot easier when I get to the next step. This is something you can teach your kids how to do. So my kids that are watching, y'all get ready. This is going to be your next chore. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That's funny. Question from Sasha Pup 61 If we don't have three inch finished triangles on a roll, we can use a large size and trim down, right? Yes, and you would just trim down to three and a half because you want that mm. half inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. And you could also do it the traditional way. We did write the patterns the traditional way. Well, actually we wrote them where you make them bigger and trim them down. Um, because I don't want people to feel like they have to buy triangle paper and not everybody has triangle paper And then when I do the videos what I'm trying to do is just show you what I do at home And then y'all can decide what you want to do at home so from here I Really found now our previous paper our previous it's foundation paper. I've never used the glue stick but with the square and a square and the flying geese that is new I have found that it is very helpful so I put a dot on one, two, three, push it down. The two that I did not, oops, that's the wrong one. The two that I did not put the glue on, I'm gonna trim. And trim on the other side. and you can see my paper will hold it or my glue will hold it so again three and it takes a couple seconds to stick and you can see that by creasing it before it saves time
and you don't have to have the glue stick. You could do pins or you can do it however you want. I just, anytime I'm working with a product, I do whatever's fastest. And to be honest, I've probably had this glue stick for 10 years and never used it. And I'm not even kidding. So I was happy to have it at home that I had it. And the glue won't hurt the fabric. And it's gonna, it's, it turns, it stops being blue at some point, and so you're not gonna see it. From Joanna Simmers, do you use a different rotary cutter for cutting paper the way you would with scissors? Um, it will dull your blade. I only have one rotary cutter at home though, so I will just use a dull one, but, oh, on this paper. No, I don't use a different one. No, I just use the same rotary cutter. Sorry. And yeah, I was like, yeah, no, I don't, and I don't even change it. And on the triangle paper? Yep, I just use the same, and then when it gets dull, it gets dull. Mm -hmm. So from here... I'm going to do the triangles on the edge. So to make it go quick, I can kind of line them up this mm -hmm. way. Oh yeah, no, I just, I use the same rotary cutter. If I use a different rotary, first of all, I can't find anything. Can y'all see how disorganized I am here? At home, I usually have like stuff all over my, I, I'm usually pretty organized, but I can never find stuff. So if I had a second rotary cutter, I would probably not work out well. So from here, I kind of have them all lined up like they're going to go to school. I'm going to turn it over. And you'll see that there's this diagonal line, this, this straight line. So I'm going to start off the paper, like way off the paper, and stitch all the way past the line over the edge. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to stitch it and then show you. And you want to use a super small stitch length, like a 1.5. So can you zoom in, Lily? And so, let's see. So I started over here and I just went all the way off. Now you could go to right here. I just don't want my stitches to come out. So I just prefer to do that. Now on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So that is um, two corners. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest on the remaining papers and answer any questions. Lots of people want more details on what glue stick you're using, the brand, what it is. Okay, so the glue stick, in the glue stick market, there's actually one company. It's called Soline, and this is it, Soline, S-E-W-L-I-N-E. It's the only glue, it's really the only glue stick that I know of anybody using, like this is what Tula uses. Mm -hmm. And there's also a Sue Daily version but it's made by the same exact company. She just changed the glue color. So it's the same exact product. So you can order either one that you like. So if you want a different color, you go for that one. Yeah. I mean, you're not gonna see the color anyway. And they, um, and then you can, there's an insert. You can insert, you can, you can refill it. Yeah. I don't know how to do it because I've never really used it until recently, so I don't know how to redo it. I just know that you can buy inserts. So you can see I'm doing two sides at once. And when you're doing flying geese with this method, you don't have to think um, about your seam allowance. And uh, both Christopher and Peyton are reporting that Will is out. Oh, poor Will. Yeah. 
And from Marsha Hart, I struggle with cutting. You make it look so easy. You know, even a fresh blade stumps me. Can you someday give us a lesson? On oh, cutting? Oh, so said Piggy is my idol. On yes. cutting? On cutting. Okay. I can talk through kind of what I do. Now here, you're not supposed to use steam on this paper because um, it kind of makes it do that. So I'm gonna turn the steam off. Now at home, I usually use the steam. You're not supposed to. I can't help myself, so. But you will get much more, you will get more accurate results with no steam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn the steam off just so that we get accurate results. And Peyton says, I like to pull the papers. He does. <laughs> he does pull the papers. And question from Linda, Linda, I'm sorry, you guys, my allergies. Linda Frederick, what size flying geese papers do you use for the serendipity quilt? Um, we'll have to look that up and put up, we can do a post on Instagram or something today. We'll have Nova look that up and we'll post it somewhere in Kimberly Stitch Squad. So we've done these two corners. Now we need to do these two. So I'm going to take the Pull the paper up and you can see that stays down, that's fine. Fold the crease that you kind of already did, which is why you do it in the beginning, and then trim. And do the same thing on the other side, just pull this up a little bit. And cut. So you're gonna do this on both, and you can see that glue is right there, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. So I would say we can, I did a lot of stuff about cutting in my beginner series. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a whole video. Okay, good. There's a whole video on that. Yeah. I was like, do I have to do that again? <laughs> well, we can share the video. And if you still have questions, let us know. Yes. Okay. From Cecilia Bass, does Kimberly like the paper for flying geese or does she still like doing it the Eleanor Burns way? I like both. I like both actually. I'm going to be honest. This is my product. The reason we made this product is because we had so many requests. So um, I'll probably still do both. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We'll probably still do both. I'll probably still do both at home. It kind of depends how much fabric I have, what kind of mood I'm in. But I do. I like her method too. Mm -hmm. I really do. So I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. And I can show her method one day on the channel. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to show different methods throughout all the blocks so that you get something different each week. Mm -hmm. um, so here we go. Now all we need to do is put the rest on. And so you put this on here, right sides together, sew on that line. Start before your dark line and after your dark line. Do that on all and then we're going to trim it down and have some perfect flying geese. From Sharon, Ru Sharon White, does low volume mean the print has a white background? Pretty much, there's kind of, yeah, pretty much. And it just means it's kind of, I have a hard time answering this because so many people fight on social media about what their real definition of it is. For me, it's just like a, got a, a, a lighter background with a little bit of print. So to each, I'm gonna be honest, and to each person it's a little bit different. Now for our low volume background um, club that we did, Fat Quarters, we're doing kind of a smaller print, not huge prints. And um, that's what I'm gonna be using and an upcoming quilt. So I think on that it's maybe subjective would be the right word. Yeah. It can be subjective. From Hyolim on, hello from Seoul, Korea. I'm wondering if I could use a regular printer paper or paper foil, it's like wax paper for baking and cooking, or paper pieces. You could, you just have to draw your lines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could. 
you'd have to draw out your flying geese. Okay, we're almost done. One more. And this method, because you cut two triangles, you see that you don't have the waist over here. Like we had the waist, let me show you. We have this waist, but usually when you do a flying geese, you have this waist also. Mm -hmm. So you do have a little bit less waist here. Um, just a FYI. And I have shown flying geese before. I can tell you if you want to do it the traditional way, you can look at Let me look. You can look at block eight. And I'll give you tips there. Okay, so here I do like to press my seams down, or what do you call it, Lily? Set my seams. Set your seams. I can never remember that word. And then go to one side and one side. My brain went press, not iron. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, like when you're, I, there's a couple of words that I can never remember. And what I'm, okay, I'll tell you that in a minute. I'll just press first. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, and then Christopher Jolly says, can you say a shout out to the Jolly Boys? Shout out to the Jolly Boys. Boys, y'all need to go to school. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble tonight. Shout out to the Jolly Boys, Christopher, Will, Peyton, and my dog, Piggy. Aww. Daddy doesn't get a shout out, and Emma doesn't get a shout out, because Emma's actually in school, doing her schoolwork, <laughs> apparently. Okay. And Gail Stratford was asking, will there be a cheat sheet for the new papers? Sure, we can do a cheat sheet. So, you got to write that down. Yes. Okay, so here we go. We're going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to cut these down. So you're just following the solid lines, except obviously not this line, because that's your piece. So I'm going to cut around the four sides. This is what I have found is quickest. So I line that up, and I can, let me just put my head in here, right there. So now I've got, I just do two sides at once. Now at home, I use a rotating mat. On camera, I don't because it just takes up too much room and it seems to get me um, kerfluffled. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just lining up my ruler on both sides. Oh, I'm just gonna do it one at a time. Okay, I'm gonna have to put this on the floor because I don't have a trash can. That's fine. Okay, so you can see right here, I didn't exactly get the right angle, so I'm gonna do that. Now I just need to cut these two lines here. Now it is very important to cut straight because that's what's going to give you the accuracy. And then that's your waist. And I'm going to pull the paper off. I have a little piece right there. And you have flying geese. Now the one thing about this is your seams are not pressed open like we're recommending. Now, if you wanted to, the very last seam you just did, you could press open. Mm -hmm. So one would be pressed open and one is not. I'm not gonna worry about it today because I'm just showing you a new method. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. But there would not be a way to make it press all the way open with this paper. So um, I'm gonna just do the rest real quick. And I think I'm just going to do one side at a time. Now at home I do this, but I'm having a hard time seeing. So I'm just going to do one side at a time so that Lily can ask questions and I don't get so confused. From Bernadette Canis, how do you stitch so straight on the sew line? I struggle with this. I think maybe I try too hard. I'm surprised I can drive straight down the street. LOL. Um, so I would make sure your pressure on your machine mm -hmm. is not too loose. So that when you're looking at your foot, like right here, 
You don't want a lot of space between your foot and the bed of your machine. Mm -hmm. And if it's too loose, it could make you go a little wobbly. Mm -hmm. So I would just kind of maybe check that. And I would say I do it from experience. Like, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. So I, um, I'm just used to it. Also, I think what you said earlier about having a more open toe foot where you can see it. Yes. Okay, so I'll show you. So this foot came with my Juki, and it's technically not called an open toe, so please don't email me and tell me I named it wrong. That's the Kimberly name for the foot, but I can see it, so it's open to me. Mm -hmm. But if you have a quarter-inch foot like this, see this thing is wider and you can't see so i mean all the machines are different like a bernina machine they're all different every machine is different so you just whatever works for you whatever you have mary 893 was asking have you ever used the creative grid stripology excel ruler and would you recommend it thank you so i have used it um i don't own one and um, a lot of people love them. Like Cheryl, who works here, loves it. And that's the only way she cuts two and a half inch squares. I love to cut, so I don't have one. And I kind of think it's big. So where would I put it in my sewing room? And I'd lose it. So I don't own one and I don't use one. But um, a lot of people like them. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't feel like I need it. But and I love Gudrun, so. Yeah. And we also have lots of tutorials that Gudrun was able to do with us last year. On like, yeah, especially, I mean, the hardest part when you get that ruler is inserting your blade mm -hmm, mm -hmm, into the thing. And so she shows you how you really do it. Because I thought you used to do this. I thought you would do this, but you don't. You do this. Uh -huh. So she's got lots of videos on our channel. And we're hoping when the world comes back that she can come back. Yes. Okay. Tina Rutten said, Christopher Payton, Will, and Peggy should do a show, Quilting with the Jolly Boys. I'd watch oh. that. They want to. They want to be on my channel. Oh. <laughs> but they, they just created Google accounts yesterday or something. I don't know what they did, but I haven't ha they were at basketball last night, so I didn't have time to talk to them and be like, can you? I told them not to spam channels. Oh. Yeah, they're being very nice in the chat. Oh, they're good boys. Yeah. They're good boys. They are good boys. All my kids are good. If they weren't, they would be in trouble. I'm pretty strict. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm pretty strict. Last night, yeah, I'm pretty strict. Let's just say that. I'm not going to tell the story. I have some good stories from recently, but I just, they're not, um, they're not um, YouTube appropriate. Oh. Because, I mean, you know, kids, they get older. Yeah. From Jennifer Daniel Johnson, would it be possible to press the first seam open before you do the second seam, then press the second seam open? It won't work. With the paper, it won't work. Because you'd have to pull the paper off for that to work. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Boop, boop, boop. So you could maybe take this. I will tell you what you could do if you had a lot of time on your hands. There's really three ways to make flying geese. The traditional way, which I showed in block eight, that one for me is my least favorite. I don't like doing it that way because I cannot sew as fast on the diagonal and get it as accurate. Another method would be the Eleanor Burns Flying Geese rulers. There's two sizes. The other method is our brand new Flying Geese paper. And Creative Grids also has a Flying Geese ruler. I don't have experience with that one. But the reason that I would do this instead of the traditional way is because it's more accurate. So it will take me longer, but my block will be more accurate. So you have to decide what's more important to you. Do you want to go faster? Do you want to be more accurate? You know, there's like a give and take in life and everything. So that's why we made this because so many people asked for it. And now we're going to put the block together. Mm -hmm. We're going to try, we're going to find all our pieces. So I'm going to use this as a guide. I'm going to use, let's see. I'm going to put that as my guide. I'm just going to follow that instead of the pattern. Let's see if I have the pattern the right way you got to. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then the dark on the inside. 
and then oh we have to do these so these have to be sewn together first actually so i'm going to leave that there sorry and i'm going to go ahead and do these so what i'll do is i will lay them all out like in rows i kind of and i have a design board at home which makes this a lot easier so i'm going to change my foot to the quarter inch foot and you're going to put this right sides together and pin now i'm going to show you two different ways to do it and we're going to go to the front camera so the first way to do it is this way where you just pin and you have the uh, flat side no seam on top so that's our first one i'm going to show you and then i'm going to show you a second way that's a cheater way that i usually do not do so have my quarter inch foot and i'm going to just stitch with a quarter inch without thinking about that seam underneath make my stitch length a little longer and then we're going to open it and see what happened look perfect i don't have to worry about it so this is how i do it home all the time 100 percent. now if you want to cheat you can do this pin sew with this on top and with when you're sewing on top you watch where your needle goes to make sure it goes right at that intersection now to me that's too much work but a lot of people do that so i'll show you like when you get there you just make sure you're right there and to be honest if you're using the paper there's no reason you would need that because you're so accurate because you're using the paper, this section is accurate. You're not gonna need it. So I'm just gonna do it the way I normally would do it. And then we'll press. And can you remind us what stitch length you used on the paper? 1.5 and then I use like 1.75 1.8 for regular stitching so those all came out perfectly now if you didn't use the paper or if you didn't use the Eleanor Burns method it's not going to come out as accurate guaranteed so I'm gonna I'm just put my mat on top of this and hope it doesn't move and then we're gonna set the seam so just make it really nice and flat I will press to the side that it does not have the seam because that's the easiest way to press if you're ever wondering all you have to do is like put it down whichever way it goes is the way I press first and then I'll press open whatever has the least um, resistance and then I'm gonna turn my steam back on and Tina Rutten says has Kimberly's platinum machine arrived yet does she miss having a zigzag on her machine okay so the machine I have right now is the white Juki it does not have a zigzag so my new one is the same exact machine different color it has not arrived yet but I do have a baby lock set up in my sewing room that my mother bought that does have a zigzag so if I need that I use the one that my mom gave me mm -hmm. and I leave them set up at this all the time I just have to move a chair to it so look at that that looks so good and that's the results you're gonna get with the paper and I do think I mean I love the Eleanor Burns way and I've done that for years and years and years you're gonna get better results with this but I'm gonna still do both methods but this is like so accurate do 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 and I'm gonna when I put these on the side I'm gonna put the clapper on it and I still don't have an update on when they're coming they're made in the United States so um, I think when they arrive they arrive mm -hmm. people have also been asking about the iron why you like this iron if it's coming back in stock soon okay so Aliso has had manufacturing delays and I have not had them in stock in 10 months 
this is the only iron I use. Not only is it the only iron I use, there's a pink one and I don't use it because it's just not as good as the yellow one. And I love everything in my sewing room to be cute, so I wish I could use the pink one, but I like the yellow one better. If you can't, I don't have them in stock. The date they're giving me is March, is now April 1st, March, 3rd, March 15th to April 1st. We did get some of their smaller irons in today. Um, I haven't used those before. The reason I like this iron is it doesn't spit water and I don't have to do this and this and this and this. So, um, if you can't, I would just look everywhere you can. I mean, they're pretty much impossible to find right now. But it's just, you know, every company is going through a lot right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So when you look at this block, what's happening here is these are joining and these are joining. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like doing that. Mm -hmm. You could do this where it does a full circle, mm -hmm. but then that's going to kind of look funny here. Um, you could also do, like I said, a darker color here, but it's going to lose your star effect here. So, and you could also add another half square triangle on the corner if you wanted to make it super hard. But I'm going to put it back the way that it goes. I'm hoping that this is the right way. Down, 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 down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put these right sides together, pin, and then I'm going to stitch all the way down without cutting my thread. And anytime there's a new product on the market, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be mine. It could be anything. Try it. See if you like it. If you like it, great. If you don't, go back to what you were doing. It's always great to try new things just like it is in life. And you just decide what works best. All right. We've had some YouTube members joining, some super chats coming in. First YouTube member that joined today was Lisa Walters. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from West End Quilter for 15 Canadian dollars. And they said, love these blocks and the videos. Thank you. And then a super chat from Colleen Lane for $20. Thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you. And super chat from your friend and mine, Valeria Bauer, for $19.99. And she put a little dancing pair that says, you are amazing. Thank you. You know, when I watch, now when I watch other, I watch a lot of live streams. And um, none of them are quilting, of course, but I watch a lot of live streams. And um, every time I see this, the, that, that pair that says that, I think of her. Oh. So, <laughs> because a lot of people use that one. Yeah. I think it's like the one of the... First ones that yeah. pops up, yeah. Mm -hmm. It only took me like six months to figure out how to even do a super chat. <laughs> but you got it now. I got it now. So here I have pressed to the way that was easiest. So towards here and here and here. So that I wouldn't have to butt up against anything. But now I'm going to press it open. And hope I don't burn myself. Last time I burned myself. Last video. Two, three, four, five. And we did do a members only video this week mm -hmm. and we went through all of the Moda. We're going to do a trunk show of Moda next Friday for everyone. We couldn't fit it in this week because we have so much stuff that it, there just wasn't enough space physically to do it. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Peterson was asking when we expect cider pre-cuts to come in. Um, I don't know. We'd have to ask. We'd have y'all have to email Lucy and find out. Okay. We have no idea. So I've got that put back right. I do check that because sometimes you could do that and then you're gonna have a funny block. Because it's the wrong way. <laughs> So I'm going to do that first, cut my little chain pieces. 
pin everything and then sew down that line again. And another super chat from Leslie Bircher for $4.99. And Leslie says, Kimberly, you have changed my scrap life, spent three days cutting into squares, but feel like a woman unleashed. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, it's Leslie. exciting to have the leftovers. And from Jennifer Jacobs, super chat for $5. And Jennifer says, thank you for sharing your method of making it bigger and cutting it down. My Valentine's runner came out beautifully and was stress-free. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear that, Jennifer. And then we had another super chat from Betty Williams for $5. Thank you, Betty. chat from Deborah Weedrick. Thank you for five dollars. Thank you. Okay, so before I iron, I'm going to look at my seams. This one I feel like is not perfect. It's close enough. But I could tell when I stitched, I could just feel it didn't come out exactly, but it's fine. So I'm going to do the same thing where press to whatever's easiest. So this will if you flip it, you can tell, see how that went that way? Mm -hmm. It went that way naturally. So I, that's what I do is I press to worry, press the way it would naturally go, and then I press open. And that, the reason I do that is it's, I'm less likely to burn myself. Either way would actually work, and it would come out the same. And then another super chat from Ileana Fernandez for $19.99. And Ileana put a little fox who is and looks like samurai gear holding a flag that says number one. Thank you. And she also said, thanks for the updates. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. We thanks appreciate so you too. And Swarovski Queen is asking, why do you press your seams open? So each quilt I do differently. Some quilts I press open, some quilts I don't. On this quilt right here, when you start putting it together, there are lots of seams that touch. And so when I'm making this block and this block, I don't wanna have to worry about if my seams are gonna go different directions. So I, that's why we're doing it. It's just the placement. So here I'm going to go ahead and leave my chain together and just pin one side. I always pin at the intersections. So um, here I just make sure that my seams are going to nest. And then cut this one. Now this one has two points that meet. So this, this and this. So what I like to do is poke a pin and that's just what I made up a long time ago. So in this intersection where the tip is, put my needle right in there. Make sure on the other side it comes out right. And then put my pin where that same intersection is right there. So the two, and then I make it kind of straight and tall. And then pin on both sides. And hopefully when I go over that seam, mm. it will match up. It might, it might not. We'll see. Put some more pins and then I'm just gonna stitch. And I'll leave this like just hanging off. So it's no big deal. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna cut it off because I'm afraid if I cut it off and then put it back, I'm gonna put it back wrong. So I just leave that hanging off. And 
And so I'm going to look, and my points right there match up, and everything matches up. Yay. So then I'm just going to fold this over. Now, if I hadn't, if I'd cut that off, I might accidentally put it over here. Mm. So I just, I just, I don't want to have to think. And I'm going to do the same thing here. That green has not shown up as good. I'm going to do the same thing here so that hopefully that stays together. Now you could eyeball it. This is just what I like to do. Okay, and Denise Turk was asking, any update on when the clappers will be available as well as the Lori Holt book stands? Love you guys. Okay, Lori Holt Book Sands is March, April. What was the first one? Clappers? I don't know. Yes. Can you email me that, Lily? And I'll look it up. I'll look it up and see if I have a better update for next week. Okay, so we're going to start moving everything off over here. Okay. And then um, I'm going to iron. I'm going to move the, I'm going to hand this to Lily. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to iron. Now on this one, if I was to iron right now towards the side, I'm gonna touch these seams right here. It's gonna flatten those and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna press toward the inside. That's the only way that'll work because if you do it the other way, you're gonna get into your other seams. So on here, I'm just going to press to whichever way. I'm not gonna. And then I'm gonna press open. Let that sit a little bit. And there's a lot of stuff going on here, so. If you finger press, or if you use Lori's seam roller, which I just moved, um, you're less likely to burn yourself. But now here, I do need to let this iron sit here about five to eight seconds to really get it flat because there's so many things going on. Sometimes when you have more seams, you have to let the iron sit longer. You just want to make sure you don't scorch your fabric. Mm -hmm. And if you do scorch your fabric, it will not come out, so. Marlene P. says, can you use the flying geese paper for the outside border of the fig tree sampler quilt, quilt along that is going on now? Um, the size, we don't have that size because I already looked into that. So we don't have that size. Oh, sorry, and the, can I have the long ruler too? Yeah. Sorry, of course, thanks. So um, yeah, that size won't work. So you can see right here, when we did the triangle paper, you can see that little bump right there on that one. You don't see it as much on the others. That's because it's pressed to one side and not open. So you, but when it's quilted, like when Gina quilts this, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is trim out the outside edge and that's gonna get these little tails off. And it's just gonna get it really nice and straight for when I put this into some kind of quilt. Mm had a super chat from C.M. Burks for $4.99 and they said, good morning. This is my first time to be able to watch live. Thank you all so much for all you do. Thank you. Thank you for watching. So hopefully my block is right. Um, 
Thank you to Carrie for designing it for us from Miss Rosie's. Let me know what questions y'all have before I take a little break. But it looks cute, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of different. Um, some people are asking what setting your iron's on. It's the hottest. I'll show you. It's cotton. Is it? I don't know. Let me show you. I don't know. I have something on my fabric. Um, so when you look, let's see. Yeah, it says linen plus cotton. But mm -hmm. So I have it on this one, and then I put this. This is steam. Mm -hmm. So I have it all the way over here and then all the way over here. Mm -hmm. And then when I want more steam, I push this. Mm -hmm. And then this will spray water that way, mm -hmm. But so I don't ever use that. On mine, I've accidentally pressed that button, and then I'm like, wait, why is water coming out? <laughs> Oh, there's something on my fabric. Oh, it's it's coming off. Let me see. From Candace K, could you use square into square paper and cut the finished piece in half for two flying geese? I, no, because you will not have enough. You would have to cut a quarter inch. Mm. Do you hand me the paper real quick? I think it's right there. Square square? Yep. Or one of the square and square blocks that's yeah. finished right there. Because I can show you how it's not going to work. Thank you. So this is our... Sorry. <laughs> this is our square and a square paper. So what she's saying is, could you just cut right here to have a flying geese? Mm -hmm. But that's not going to work because if you cut it in half, you do not have the bottom quarter inch seam allowance here or here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you cut it here, which is a quarter inch past the seam, um, say you cut it there, that works, but then over here you don't have a flying geese. Mm -hmm. So no, technically no. That was a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take a tiny break. Lily's going to show you some stuff, and I will be right back. Mm -hmm. And I have a mess, and I'm so sorry, but it is a mess, a mess over here, Lily. Oh, man. Yeah, I was like, I don't know why that trash bin got moved. Sorry. You're fine. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yes, it is. Okay. 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 Hello. Hi everyone. My name is Lily, uh, voice, videographer, behind the camera, all that. Uh, I'm going to move Kimberly's block to the side here. And today I am going to be showing you guys a few things that I'm working on. Give you a little hint um, and I will be showing my progress of these things as we go along in these little intermissions. So let me actually cut to top camera here. Boop, boop. All right, so I've got my socialites binder. I've actually just used this to transport some fabric back and forth from work. So it also has great use for that. Um, one thing last week, if you watched, uh, somebody asked if Kimberly can make something out of the my favorite color is Moda yardage fabric that we showed. So she is working on something. I am also working on something. Kimberly asked me if I could make a dress um, because I've been into garment making for a while. And so I decided to actually just pick a pattern uh, from Simplicity. And let me pop that pattern up for you guys. So I'm going to be making that with this fabric. I actually already started working on it. Uh, so hopefully by next week, I'll be able to show you guys uh, that lovely dress, uh, vintage 50s inspired one. And we can also link to that pattern on Amazon if you guys like. And the other thing I'm working on is my Nebula block of the month. Woohoo! I am super, super excited for this. Uh, so here's all my stuff from the first shipment of my Nebula block of the month. As you can see, I haven't even opened it yet. So that is something I'm going to be working on. Uh, every month I will be showing you guys my progress, my blocks. But as you can see, here's the fabric for block one, which I believe is that block right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very exciting stuff. Things that I am working on for quilting. And let me cut back to front camera here. There we go. Hello. 
And let's see, Megan Jorstad says, does Lily, Lily have an Instagram showing all her whips? Uh, so we're actually gonna start sharing those on the Fat Quarter Shop Instagrams and Facebooks and all that. Um, I say Instagrams and Facebooks because I'm also doing other things on the cross stitch side that I wanna share my progress from. Um, so we will be posting that there as it does come up. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Um, I'll show you guys a little outfit of the day stuff back here um so these pants are were my mom's pants and she started eating a lot better and they don't fit her anymore so now they're mine um and then this shirt i got from the online thrift store thread up um i believe this is uh from the 80s based off of the tag and i am wearing kendra scott earrings yes i was trying to go for primary colors and my shoes are blue um but I won't stick my foot up here so you guys can see. Just take my word that they're blue. Um, but I wish I had these earrings in blue so it would have been like the perfect like, you know, RGB, um, you know, red, green, not green, RGB, no, um, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And Melissa Nelson says, hi, Lily, are you going to start your nebula? Uh, yes, I am. I do not start like Kimberly. I will say that. I use the firm version. Um, of faultless I, we sometimes have one over there and it's not there right now but it's the new one with the gold cap um so it's firmer than the one she uses so i just lightly spray it with that and it gets stiff um but kimberly's method is um different with the one she uses and we can link to that but i will be starching it um so it will my fabrics will shrink a little bit and i'll let you know how that affects everything but it should go great um Okay, and then there's a question for Kimberly there, so I will let her answer that when she comes up here. And yeah, thank you for having me. Do do do. Boo do boo do boo. And a mission. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna move the iron. Do you want me to hand it to you? Yeah. I don't want to. Here. There we go. Sorry, we're gonna move the iron so that. We have room. Okay. We're also going to move all this. Sorry, we have to move all this stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So tell me what that question was first. Oh. Ooh. The question was from Christine Tower, and they were asking, does the pressing mat work differently than the regular ironing board, the one you've been using? Though? No. And I only use that one here because on the back side, oh, we took it away. The back side has a mat. So one side's a mat and one side is an ironing pad. And so we can flip it over and I don't want anything, it's thick enough to where it won't warp this mat when I put it on top. But at home, I just have a ply, actually have a plywood or wood, I don't know, plywood, wood, something my uncle made. And um, I put fleece and then batting and then another cover. So I just, I don't have anything that I bought, I guess is the way to say it. And people were also wondering if you ever use a wool pressing mat. Mm -mm, I don't like them. Um, and the reason I don't like them is because they have a smell to a, That's my accent. They have a <laughs> smell to them because they're made of wool, which is, I guess, a sheep or a lamb. And I can smell it, and it's a no. So I don't, but a lot of people like them. So brand new i'm going to show you today i'm so excited our longtime friends and creative quilters carrie nelson and joanna of fig tree quilt so carrie is from miss rosie's and joanna is of course from fig tree now this is how we start drafting a book it's going to have a ton of text so you can see we have no photos in here right now but there's going to be a lot of text and this is over 20 projects and we are starting with only six blocks. Each, um, each block is made into like five or six projects and Joanna makes one and Carrie makes the other. So I'm gonna show you all of them. You can pre-order this book now. It ships in, it's April or May. And so 
If you pre-order it now, you get 10% off and the book is gonna retail for $27.95. And I'm just gonna show you all of the projects in the book. So it is primarily six chapters based on um, those blocks. And I'm gonna do it with the upper camera today so that we can kind of not kill me. <laughs> um, so this one is called Vintage Spools. It's 69 by 69. Joanna designed it and sewed it, and the quilter is Marion Bott. And all of this, you know, in the book, we will list who the quilters are in case you want to send your quilts out mm -hmm. to get yours done the same way. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing a photo shoot for this pretty soon, and so Lily will do some behind the scenes. Yes. My favorite part. So I love this quilting. So Gina, you gotta figure this quilting out because I love it. And so this is the inside. It This one has an inner border and you could use the papers. And this is an outer border. Now on some of the quilts that are designed, because each block, one of the designers designed the quilt, but they both make it. So some of them, they change the borders just to be different, to show you how quilts will look with and without borders. And these are all scrappy. We do have three fat quarter bundles that Joanna and Carrie put together that are just scrappy. But this book will just use your scraps. So that scrap bucket you've been keeping will be great for this. Mm -hmm. So that is the first quilt. There's again, 20 projects in the book. So can I hand them to you? Yeah. I think I'm gonna scoot them that way. Mm -hmm. that one. Perfect. So that's quilt one. Using the same exact block, which is the vintage spools, Joanna made a sewing machine cover and Anna, Anna sewed it, Anna Deneen sewed it. So this is the sewing machine cover. So it's that same block. And so you put it on your sewing machine like this and you would tie it right there. Hold on, the ties are right here, right here. So you would tie it. So there's instructions for the front and the back. And you can see these are collections of Joanna's from over the years. I mean, this is from like four or five years ago. I mean, a lot of these are super old, like this one is super old. So that is the second project in the book. And we kept the chapters kind of together. This one is the cutest pillow ever. I love the quilting on this. So this is a quilting that you can do on your home machine. Can you zoom in? We have shown another one of Joanna's quilts that she sent, and it is just a zigzag. See over here, it's ruining it. Let's see, right there, let's see. I'm trying to just show it, but it's just a, See, it shows wavy, but it's just mm -hmm. a zigzag. Oh. Let me see if I can get it. Let's go this way. Yeah, there, you can see it this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just a zigzag. So you can do this on your home machine using that same block. And it's a pillow and Joanna made it and it's an envelope back. And you can see on the back, oh, there, you can see the quilting there better. Oh. So it's, it doesn't distort it as much. So you could do this quilting on your home machine. I really like it. And also in that chapter, there are some pin cushions as part of that chapter. I know they are so cute. So these are the pin cushions. They're vintage spool pin cushions and Joanna made them and Cynthia Bird made them with her and instructions will be in the book on how to do the pillow, how to do the pin cushions, how to do the blocks, how to do the quilts, all of that. So if you just wanna make the block, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And then the next chapter, we move to a nine patch. This quilt is ginormous. It is made of Minnick and Simpson fabric. Carrie designed this one and this one's called Nine Across. And the one that um, Joanna did, you're gonna see is different. 
Carrie Nelson, oh no, Carrie Shaka of Red Velvet Quilts quilted it, and the fabric is Minikin Simpson. And this one actually uses two blocks. It uses a button block and a nine patch block, and this one is on point. And that rounded corner is beautiful. Oh. So to do this rounded corner, this had to be biased. Mm, so you could curve mm, it, mm -hmm. even though it is a gentle curve. And oh my gosh, look at that binding. That binding is fabulous. Look, it's machine quilted. Look how perfect it's machine quilted. Oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I wish I could do that. So this is a combination of two blocks, a button block, a nine patch block, and it for forms a star. And it's pretty big. So you can see these are scraps of different collections. Like this is probably a different collection than this one. In fact, I know it is. And she added some wovens in here. So this is from the second chapter. So pretty. Okay, I'm gonna pass this one off. This one's harder to pass off, Lily, sorry. I'm gonna go boop. <laughs> It's the only way for my back to not kill me the rest of the weekend is because if I hold these up, I'll be in pain the rest of the weekend. Mm -hmm. So this one is called Nine Across from the same chapter. Carrie designed this one. Joanna sewed it. Marion bought, quilted it. And these are just fig tree fabrics. And you're going to see that this one, oh, this is also on point. It just looks different. So this is, a, but this one is a smaller version and it's a little bit different. So it uses the same blocks, but a completely different quilt. I love this quilting. Oh my gosh, I love this quilting. It's um, double wedding ring and it's tiny. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it has a yellow border. And so with this quilt, they were going with the pastel fig tree fabrics. So there's a lot of Bella solids, and then these are low volume. So when people asked earlier about low volume, like this, this, this would be low volume. So it's a background, and it has a little bit of a print on it. It's beautiful. So that is part of chapter two. And then this one is nine across throw. Carrie is the designer. Chelsea from Sherry and Chelsea. So Chelsea Stratton made this one. And the quilter is Brooke Becky of Lady Bell Fabric. And this is the one that's on straight. So you saw the other two that I just showed you are different quilts, but they're on point. This one is straight and it has sashing, bless you. And I love the quilting on this. So this one also, I'm gonna to try to do this without it falling off the table. <laughs> Delilah's like, what are you doing? <laughs> this one, um, it has scrappy binding all the way around. Oh. Yep. And of course you could do scrappy binding on any of them and you could also do that curve on any of them. Mm -hmm. And there's the backing. So that one they kind of did light on the front, darker on the back. This next one is from the next chapter. The name of the quilt is Pirouette. C Carrie designed this one and Cynthia Bird stitched the quilt and Marion Bott quilted it. And of course we will list everyone who made all of these in the book. And this one's pretty big so I'm gonna flip it open. And there you go. So it's beautiful. So I'm gonna try to point out, this is sashing and sashing posts. And then you go down, oh, go down, sashing. And so this is um, the different blocks put together into a big block. And you could use half square triangle paper on this.
and I'm going to pull um, this way so you can see all of it. A few people were asking if we're going to include the quilting in the book. No, but you can contact the quilter and the quilter will um, the quilter will let you know. And the reason we don't do that is these pantographs that are used are sold by lots of companies. Mm -hmm. So if we listed it, one company might get mad because they might have thought they made that thing first mm -hmm. and you're getting into something that, and also we're not experienced on it. We don't sell that product. So if we put that in the book and you started asking questions, we wouldn't be able to answer. Mm -hmm. But we list the quilter so that if you love the quilting, you just go to the quilter and they'll do it for you. But pantographs are sold by several companies and we also don't, like we're not affiliated with any of them. And so I don't like to recommend something that I don't know has good customer service also. This one is Carrie's version of the last quilt you saw called Pirouette. Carrie Straka of Red Velvet Quilts in Dallas quilted this one. Okay, this is amazing on the back, so I'm gonna show the back first. Again, this is Carrie Nelson's quilt and this I love, oh my gosh, this is like the best piece backing. I'm gonna have to copy this idea. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm gonna have to copy this. That's cool. And we'll make sure that this is photoed and we might have to put instructions on how to do this in the book actually. So this right here, this fabric right here is 108 inch wide. I believe it's from Shine On, but I know 100% sure it's from Bonnie and Camille. And so it's, I'm gonna go all the way from the left. Okay, so she added a square here. These are half square triangles. And then it says Pirouette by Carrie Nelson, quilted by Carrie Straka of Red Velvet Quilts in Dallas, Texas in November, 2020. And then she adds more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the next one, but I'm gonna get all the way to the end so you can see it. And these are all just scraps. Okay, and it says not everything That is fact can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Hmm. Okay, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. James Baldwin. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this over and you'll see the front and you'll see that, I'm gonna show you. See, same fabrics. Hmm. And you can see a lot of these are American Jane fabrics and this is Bonnie and Camille. And Carrie Nelson has always done her quilts scrappy. If you go back to the very beginning of her company, she has always done all of her quilts scrappy. This is my favorite one in the book. And so you can see these are blocks, sashing, and then they're turned. So same exact block, and I'm gonna go, all, I'm gonna push it all the way up. And Carrie has always mixed collections. That is something she has always done from the beginning of time. The one thing that she has always done, she's always used Moda. Now she works at Moda, but she has always used Moda in her covers and she's always mixed her collections. So this is continuation of what she has done for years. And we will list in the book triangle paper or whatever type of paper you need. I love it. It's, oh, I love this quilt. Mm -hmm. And on that label, she used a, a, what's the name of that pin? It's just a Pigma pin. Sorry, Lily has on a mask. So I was like, what did you say? Now from that section of the book, this is so amazing. I love it, love it, love it. It's called a Pirouette Table Topper. Carrie Nelson designed it. Melissa Corey sewed it and quilted it. And I think the quilting really makes this quilt. And I was curious if she did this on her, 
I know she has a long arm, so I'm curious if she did this quilting on her home machine or her, like a big machine. Because that would be really cool if you could do it on your home machine. And so this again is that same block, just set different. And it, you could do this as a wreath and you could put a big bow here if you wanted like a bow on top and make it a wreath for Christmas. You could do this as um, like just Valentine Day colors or Easter colors or patriotic. You could do this definitely could be seasonal. And these are actually fig tree fabrics right here. This is a fig tree Christmas from a couple years ago. This is Bonnie and Camille fig tree. So it's a combination of designers. And also the very last item in that section is the pin cushion. And Carrie was the designer. Joanna made this one and Diana Johnson put it together. And so in the book, they'll talk about what they stuff their pin cushions with, all of that. The book has a ton of information on different things that they do in their methods. The next part of the book, this is called Oregon Trail. Joanna designed it and sewed it. Diana Johnson quilted this. And of course the fabric is all fig tree. And I love this one. So on this one, the book has two different instructions. I'm gonna go to a corner. You can do this by marking squares, marking on your squares, you know, so many inches away and then adding it to the side. We've included templates and we are looking into making plastic templates so that you can just put that template down, cut it and make it. So you can either do a template or pieced, either one. Both instructions are in the book and this one was custom quilted. So you can see feathers and then you can see um, like orange peels kind of. Mm -hmm. And it's got sashing. So this one I love. This would look really good if you even did it two tone. So like red and white all over, mm -hmm. blue and white, scrappy. Anyway, and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna go this way. And you can see this is from like one of her brighter collections that she did years ago and she's mixed that with a newer collection. You know, it's all mixed. I can't even remember when the last time she did this pink purple. And so there is that one, Oregon Trail. And the next one, Carrie Straka made it and quilted it and her company is Red Velvet Quilts. And again, um, this is the Oregon Trail quilt. And you can see that there is a scrappy binding. So there will be a section in the book that talks about scrappy binding. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love this. This is like amazing. Mm -hmm. And on this one, I'm very excited about how the binding pulls it together. I'm not a, I'm not a big scrappy binding person, mm -hmm. but if you look here, they did big pieces. So oh. like rather than small chunks, it's big. And then look, it goes all the way around. So it's like a width of fabric probably instead of cutting up little small pieces. So this is a combination of fig tree fabrics and Minnick and Simpson. And if that is not amazing, I don't know what is because that is like so pretty. Can you imagine your living room decorated in these colors? Maybe I'll redecorate my whole house in these colors. And then Kevin will come home and say, what are you doing? Kevin would love this quilt because he's a UT fan and his favorite color is actually green, but he likes blue. <gasps> I love this quilt. Yeah, I love that blue with that orange. I know it's very unique. And then this pulls it together. This is um, all Hollow's Eve, but this blue and orange really 
make it kind of make the quilt to me. And then the next one from that section is De Joanna designed it, Susan Aki sewed it and quilted it. And I want to show you, can I have that one back real quick, just for right yeah. here? Also, the quilter of this one is Sue Rogers. Okay, sorry. No, you're good, you're good. We didn't list because we weren't sure before. Okay, so this one, I want to show you the difference in quilted and non-quilted. Sorry, washed and not washed. <laughs> Wait, what? I could see Lily was like, she made her eyebrows went up and I was like, I must have said something wrong. <laughs> so this is before you wash it. And this would be after you wash it, but if you put it in the dryer. So this real crinkly look is after you put it in the dryer. So when I wash my quilts, which is very rarely, I let them hang dry because I don't like the crinkly look. And you can see this quilt looks totally different than this quilt. They look totally different, but they're pretty much the same. Same block. It's showing you how to use different colors and a different mix. This is all Joanna Figueroa fabric. And this is two designers up here. And then is this the next section? That is the next section. Okay, so the pillows go second, right? Yes. Okay. Just fluffy, so they're oh. Lily puts all this together. Lily and Ashley get a big shout out for doing all this. This is Cathedral Garden. Joanna designed it and sewed it, and Diana Johnson quilted it. And I've never sent anything to Diana Johnson, but I have seen her quilting for years and have really admired her work. Um, I know they've been friends for a long time. So this one I'm actually going to do from the front also, if I can, because it's not too, too heavy. Ooh. And hope it doesn't Whoa. fall off the table. It looks good. Can I put it down now? Yeah. Okay. So I, this is so amazing. So this is basically just a square with corner squares, adding sashing and posts. And this one has an amazing flying geese border with an outer border. And this is one of my favorite prints of all time. And Joanna puts it in different collections and I have so much of it at home. That's actually, yeah, I used that on my la on one of the ones I did last year on video in a different color. This is the same quilt. Joanna is the designer. Judy Adams sewed this one. Carrie Shaka quilted it. And the background fabric on it is chambray. Now, I don't, recognize, I don't recognize this fabric, so I don't know where this fabric is from, but this is cute. It's probably an older fabric. So, this looks totally different. So this is a low volume quilt. So the, the background is 12120 dash, probably 53 if I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And these are all low volume. So if you're in our low volume club, back quarter club, this is something you could do is collect all the whole year and then just add this background. So here's the block right here. It creates that circle. But if you look at it, that could also be the block because that makes an X. Oh. So O's and X's, except it's really just one block, but it creates that effect. So whichever way you want to look at it, because you know how sometimes you look at those pictures on Facebook, it's like, do you see purple? Do you see pink? Well, this is like, do you see an O or do you see an X? So, and this also has that same border, but this one doesn't have the outer border. So we're showing you different ways you can work with the borders in the book. Also, people are saying the backing, the text is Zen Chic. It is? I think so. Okay, maybe it is. I don't recognize it. But I want some of it. Yeah. 
And then this one is a throw version of that. And this backing was on another quilt also. Ooh, mm -hmm. And the fabrics are reversed. So you can do dark here or light here. So this is the basically reversed of that one. Has a outer border without the flying geese border. And this is chapter five. I don't think this pillow goes in that chapter. No, it's the next one. Okay, good, okay. So pretty. So this is chapter five, and now the last chapter of the book is chapter six, and I made one of these. So I get to see one that I made a long time ago. So sometimes on the weekend I sew, and then you get to see it two years later, right? Uh, this chapter is Neighborhood. The designer is Carrie. Joanna made this one, and Diana Johnson quilted it. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> I was guessing. I was like, I wonder if I'm going to get it right. And the border on this is amazing because it pulls it together. So I want to show you the border. The border is gingham. The binding is a dot. And in the book, I actually made this one. It's very easy. There are blocks for the house and the trees. And you can see, let me show it from the front. You can see that there's a different layout where some trees are. They're different on each row, the placement. And this fabric right here looks like buttercream and figs, which was my favorite collection of all time. And it was about 15 years ago. Oh, wow. And I was like dying for them to reprint it, but they never have. The next one is the same one. It's just Carrie's version. Judy Adams made it and Carrie Shaka quilted it. And this is also a fun backing. And so this one is totally modern. And then the next one is what I made. So I made this a um, long time ago. I don't even know when. So this is the table runner, and so this will be in the book, the table runner. So you can make either a quilt like you just saw, or a table runner, and you can even do this one modern if you were interested. But I'm excited because this is going to be perfect in my house. This is totally the colors of my house. And this is a table topper. So you could make this table topper. And you could put all the, the houses the same way if you were interested. So you could either turn them. This one is, oh, this is actually a pillow. Yeah. Carrie designed it and Joanna sewed it. And so this one, the, the pillow is an envelope back, but it's done differently. And we will have instructions on how to do that. And it's a big pillow. And this is the one that's quilted the same way. So you can see that if you put your top on here. You don't have to put a muslin on the back if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then these pillows are part of the book. Yeah, yeah. they go in between these two sections. Okay, so they go in section four. We just kind of got them out of order because we don't have any space. Yeah, so they go with all the flying geese. Do, do, do. And the book is pretty big. It's a pretty big book. So let me know what questions you have. I'm super excited about the book. Again, it is called Scrapbook of Quilts. Joanna Figueroa and Carrie Nelson. I think it's kind of fun when we do this. This is our little, we use these, we have like 100 of these.
Um, this is how it all starts. This is Sarah does all of the work on this, and um, you're gonna have. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna have our regular instructions, you know, with our great instructions, all of that. From Gwen Smith, is there going to be a sew along for this book? Yeah. I'm actually gonna try to get the chair so I can sit down. Okay. Can we move? I was gonna say, I think we can move things around again. Yeah, I think if you move that, sorry, yes. I have to sit on my back, it's gonna kill me. No, you're good. Here. I'm gonna move this one this way. And then sit down. Oops. Woo! I stood up for a long time. That was a lot for me. Okay. What was the question? <laughs> If there will be a sew-along. Yes, there will be a sew-along. So I'm not sure, we haven't gotten that far in terms of exactly what the sew-along is going to be, when the date is going to be, but we will definitely do a sew-along. Carrie will participate. Joanna will participate. I'll participate. It will obviously be all scrappy. Don't um, me. I'm just scrappy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy Lemon Arsenault says, are there of, are some of these quilts beginner friendly? I think they're all beginner friendly actually because they just use corner squares. The only one that wouldn't be would be that template one, which I think is called Pirouette. That one would not be beginner friendly, but I can definitely do um, tutorial on it. Lots and we're hoping to do uh, templates, plastic templates. Lots of people want to know if it will be spiral bound. Nope. And from Crafting Upon Life, what is the rule of thumb for the back of a quilt? Do you go opposite of what the front is, light slash dark, or do you usually do dark? I'm afraid light would dirty easily. So I, most of my quilts have light on the back. Um, I try not to do dark on the back because I don't want it to see through, and it technically wouldn't ever, or I try to do something a little bit not, I don't like like a big floral or a small floral, I try to do a medium print. So I do usually do light, but a lot of people do different. Everybody's different, but I do, uh, I tend to, to go light. And I'm gonna give a moment for a few more questions to come in. We did have a super chat earlier from Susie Clary for $19.99. And she also put a dancing pair that says, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susie. And Oh, Nova said to say that the Flying Geese paper in Serendipity is the one and a half by three and the three by six. Yes. So somebody had asked that earlier in the yes. in the um, video. And then super chat from Jonelle Grosskos for four ninety nine, and they said, "I'm so glad to see you live for the first time. Fat Quarter Shop has made me fall in love with quilting." Thank you. It's always good to have a craft. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Ashley got this from Ryan about cider pre-cuts still waiting on the order probably next week. So those are basic gray pre-cuts. Everything is delayed, guys. Yes. Um, I'm not even going to go into why or what. Just turn on the TV. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, everything is just production delays. Mm -hmm. And you have to think of it like if a lot of people, okay, so think about it like this. This is like my, how I explain it to my kids. If you look and cases are high, they're high everywhere. So that means FedEx drivers, UPS drivers, USPS drivers, people who work where you fill your orders, people receiving your orders, everything in the chain gets kinked. And right now everything in the chain is kinked for all kinds of reasons. And then things are having trouble getting on the boat when they come from overseas, whether it's fabric or notions. And so not only is it having a hard time getting on the boats it has to get to california or new york and it has to get through customs well if a lot of people are out sick or stuff like that then everything is going to be slower so i don't think things are going to catch up for quite a while mm -hmm. and that's just life and i have no control over it but i can just tell you that we are still doing the best we can we have kevin and i built this company on customer service and we're going to do the best that we can in any circumstance and that's what we're doing right now. From Crafting a Planned Life, will you include triangles on a roll paper instructions included with the traditional piecing for this book? Um, if we don't, we're gonna, we'll put a star, we're gonna start putting stars and say, we're gonna put the traditional method and then we'll put a star and say, or you can use triangles on a roll H300, mm -hmm. stuff like that. 
right, and everyone seems really excited for the book. Uh, CM Han C said, is there any way to speed up time so the book can come out now? Joanna plus Carrie plus Fat Quarter Shop equals Dream Team. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we're doing the photo shoot really soon. So nice. what we have to do is do the photo shoot, um, and then it's gotta go through proofers and proofers and proofers, but it's been in the works for, we've been working on it over a year. Mm -hmm. So um, the next thing I was going to show you was, um, this will be my section where I just talk about different things I'm sewing at home and different sew-alongs that we're doing. Um, the first one that we're doing is the Best Friends Quilt Along. So we're doing that with Lori Holt. And we're on week three. And we are using our pineapple paper. Do we have the pad of paper here? So these, on this one, you make four. Now I'm splitting this with Lori. So Lori's making two and I'm making two. So Lily can show a pop-up of, thank you, of Lori's. And this is the six inch paper. And so this is also available in 12 inch. So I made two and then Lori made these two. And at the end, I'm gonna take all the blocks, sew them into a quilt, and we're gonna auction it off for Make-A-Wish. In fact, we do have an auction right now for our Stitches from the Heart quilt that I made with Nova, and that auction ends Sunday morning. So thank you to everyone who is bidding on that. These are some of my previous blocks. And I am using B Backgrounds and B Basics, and so is Lori. And we are leaving out the gray and browns, and I'll put that I will put that into something else. Now, you can see from this layout that there are blocks here and there are blocks on the inside. So you could take this inside and do something different. So what somebody did this week is there's eight economy blocks on the outside. They put 12. So you could take out the pineapple paper and put more economy blocks you could make this all out of courthouse steps or all out of log cabin of course this this point wouldn't come out correctly without the log cabin but there's a lot you can do with this you could change the four on the inside you could do courthouse steps instead of log cabin it wouldn't give you the star but there's lots of things you can do and again i'm using the b basics and the b backgrounds layer cakes so that is what I've sewn this week, and it's been really fun to see what everybody's sewing with. Uh, what level difficulty would you say the pineapple papers are? Um, I would say all of this is beginner since you sew on the line and since we have the instructions in here on what to cut. But this is not advanced, it just takes more time. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, it just takes more time, but it's definitely not advanced. And I did pull, after the video last week, I pulled all the paper off on all the blocks. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, I better go ahead and just do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm using Color 2000 to stitch my blocks. And then Lori's using, I bet she's using Color 2024. Mm. And the next thing that I'm sewing along with is every year I do a scrap quilt. I started about three years ago, and this year we are going to be using two of our newest triangles on a roll papers, two and three quarters, and five and a half to make this quilt. Now, this is a free pattern, and you just use the triangle paper, and if you don't want to use triangle paper, you can just do the math and do it without triangle paper. It consists of eight large blocks and 16 of the small blocks so you can see it better here and what i'm doing is i'm using just one side of the triangle paper and i am trying to use in the quilt each fabric only one time and in my previous years i kind of would make blocks throughout a project and then i was using the fabric over and over and then when i was done i would have too much of scraps of one fabric and not enough of the other so what I have decided this year to do, and um, I showed my some blocks two weeks ago, and these are my blocks for this week. So these are left over from the Jolly Bar three sew along that we will be having. I just sewed in advance. And these are left over. So I had enough to make enough of the big and enough of the small. 
and again i'm waiting until my whole quilt is completely done and then when i'm done i will use my scraps so for example the next thing i'm going to show you is this quilt which i'm in the middle of i won't sew these blocks up until this is completely done mm -hmm. if that makes sense and so because i've been kind of disorganized in the last couple of years and i just kind of make stuff and then i can't remember did i do that did i not so i just made the rule that this year i would just wait till my project is completely done and then i was able to use every single fabric in the quilt top and everything had enough left over for me to do this so every two or three weeks i'm going to be showing you new blocks and i'm going to actually start sewing blocks together so in a like in a month or two and then you'll start seeing it and then what i'm going to do is if i still have more i'm just going to put a bunch of blocks on the back oh. like you could even do this is kind of what i'm thinking i'm going to do I'm thinking of doing two small blocks on the side, one big block in the center, and then adding fabric here and here, and then backing fabric here and here. Because I know I'm gonna have enough to make a quilt bigger than this. So very excited about this one, and I really like, I tend to use, the one thing I will say is I do tend to use the same type of fabrics throughout the year. I tend to use Lori Holt, Fig Tree, Bonnie Camille. They all go together. Um, now, if I was working with something that was just like totally modern, like for example, um, Stronger Together, that's totally modern. I probably won't use those leftovers in this because it might throw the quilt off, if that makes sense. So let me know if you have any questions on those two before I show you the next quilt that I'm working on. Uh, these two were for the best friends quilt from crafting upon life will the different thread colors make a difference in the overall quilt no because it's in the seam mm -hmm. and she start i starch she doesn't starch and um so it might shrink differently too mm -hmm. but it's really just this is about just learning to sew with your friends and it's okay to have different techniques it's okay for lori to sew the way she sews and for me to sew the way i sew and lily to sew the way she sews the whole point of sewing is to have fun in your sewing room, to enjoy the process, and not try to be somebody else. Not try to be perfect if you don't want to be. So, you know, I like my stuff perfect, so that's what I do. But if Lily came over and Lily didn't want her stuff perfect, Lily can do whatever she wants, if that makes sense. So kind of the point of the sew along is to just have fun. If you use the foundation paper, though, everything will come out the same size because you cut around the outside of the paper so it's all going to come out the same mm -hmm. and when i do do that quilt what's going to happen is lori's going to send me all her blocks i'm going to lay them out on the floor and then text lori and we'll figure out where to move stuff because she's better at color than me so that she will have an input in the final layout mm -hmm. from bonnie eisenhower can you use the creative grids 10 inch pineapple trim tool for the pineapple block you could yeah, it might be a little bit different. I don't know the exact difference, but yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as it comes out six inches or 12 inches, whichever one you're doing. And Doris Moore was asking, what is the quilt in the background? It's our charity quilt. So that is gonna start in March. That's so funny, I had to turn around and look. <laughs> it's right there on the screen. Um, the background fabric is thatched. The collection is called Spring Brook. The designer of thatched is Robin Pickens, the designer of Springbrook is Corey Yoder. Jocelyn designed it for us. It's going to be a completely free pattern with all donations going to make a wish. We ask for $5 for each pattern that you download and we will be starting that in March. Um, the fabric is delayed at least a month mm -hmm. and it, I'm going to be honest, it could get delayed further. There's not much we can do about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where did you get your shirt? People are loving it. <sighs> it's a very cute shirt. I agree. I got it at Saks. Oh. It's a little expensive. Yeah. So there's a designer. His name is Johnny Wass, W-A-S, and all of his clothes is hand embroidered. So I love his stuff. His stuff can be very um, out there, like bold, like cave, like just mm -hmm. crazy colors. 
and um, I've always wanted one of his shirts because it's hand done and, or maybe it's not hand done but it's just beautiful and I've always mm -hmm. loved them and admired them so this is like the I think I I think I only have one this is the first time I found one of his items that was not too wild for me but I've always wanted it and it's very expensive but I've always wanted one and so I bought one when I went to San Antonio because mm -hmm. they have a Saks in San Antonio oh. I like to go to Saks to look at the to look and admire the fancy purses <laughs> it doesn't mean I buy them but I do like to go look at them yeah window shopping's the best okay from Tracy Mangle we had a super chat for five dollars and Tracy put a little fox that's giving a thumbs up that says good Thank you. Good job, I think. Yes. And also Tracy's profile picture is a very cute doggy. So Aww. way to go, Tracy. And then we had another super chat from Princess P, Holly Martin, for $5. And Holly says, Kimberly, your customer service is the best I've ever encountered. Thank you. And all Thank, caps, you. thank you. We will let them all know. Yes. And anytime you guys post on Facebook or anywhere, we share that to the whole company mm -hmm. so that everybody can see and we really thrive on, you know, providing you the best service that we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next sew along that we're doing is hosted by Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts. It is the Stitchery Sampler Quilt. We do have some quilt kits left. I don't know how much longer they're going to last. This is the quilt. And so it is 12 blocks, three by four, with an inner border, a flying geese border, and an outer border. Now you will notice that Joanna loves flying geese and her borders. Our foundation paper does not come in the size that's required for this. I've already looked because obviously I'm making it. So I'm gonna show you what I worked on this week. Each week she's doing a different block. So two weeks ago was block one, which was here. This was last week, block two. And this is this week's block three. So I'm gonna talk to you about the tips that I have for making this block. What I would recommend is having a Lori Holt design board and laying out every single piece and then sewing each block and then putting it back on the table. So each block, put it on the table. So you could do each step at one time, but as you stitch each, for example, if you stitch this to this, stitch it, put it back on your board. Stitch this, put it back on your board. And just kind of keep it and then carry your board to your ironing table and then carry it back. Because otherwise you're gonna be having a zig over here, over here. It just kind of gets messy. And then when you, if you just did all of it chain piece and then try to put it back together, you might forget, did I have blue over here or over here? It'll get too confusing. So I was able to make this block in under an hour. It is just rectangles and squares, but it had the design board. So that is my tip for this week. I also pressed that, ooh, look at that press. I'm gonna have oh. to fix that. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, so I just pressed towards the dark and then just pressed, when I got it into rows, I just picked a side to press towards. So I'm gonna give you two options for the sashing. And also, if you go to Joanna Figueroa's YouTube page, she has a video on how to do the applique freezer paper method. She's also shown that on our channel. I did raw edge machine applique. Okay, so I wanna show you. We're gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna show you something. So when you're making the quilt, you have sashing. Now on the cover, the way she's written the instruction is for some sashing to go this way and the other sashing to go this way and for the border to go this way and this way. That is how the pattern is written and that's great. But I don't know that I could live with that because I'm OCD. So I change the pattern to where all of my sashing goes one way. So I literally set with the fabric and a piece of paper and drew out exactly how I was going to have to cut to make it work. So I have already, I've already lost my sheet. 
Okay, so this is going to be my top. Oh, I think all my sheets got messed up, but. Oh, no, this is this is why. Here, here we go. This is my left and right border. So I have already cut that and put my sticky on it. And then this is my top and bottom border. And I've already pieced it. When I pieced it, hold on. One of them I pieced and one of them I didn't. I guess this is, oh yeah, this is the one that's pieced. When I pieced it, I did a straight seam. And the reason I did a straight seam on a border, you're supposed to do diagonal, is I didn't want it to mess up the design too much. I didn't want like a big, so I did do these straight. I went ahead and pieced it together. Now I didn't trim it down. I'll do that later. So I just went ahead and cut this and this. And then here's my sashing. I have this sashing that goes this way, which are these. And the sashings that go in between, so I wouldn't get confused, I've already sewn them into rows. Because the width on this and the width on this is different if you look at the pattern. So I spent the weekend putting these into rows so I wouldn't accidentally sew the wrong thing because the width is the same. No, the length is the same. It depends what you're looking at. The length or the width is the same. The other one's different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went ahead and did all my sashing rows. And then these are the ones that are going to go horizontally. And I just made sure all my fabric went the same way. But I hand drew out what I needed to do for it to work that way. The way that she did the instructions is this way, and that's totally fine. And these just go opposite ways, and that's fine. You decide whatever you like the best. This is what I'm doing. And it did feel good to get a little bit of the inside done, cut my borders. I just have a little, these are just little post-it notes. And I keep it in my little bucket. And actually at my house, I have all my fabric with it too, but I didn't want to bring all of that. Now, the one thing that I will be doing next is, I'm going to show you, for next week, block four is English paper piecing. So for next week, I'm going to refer you to all of Tula Pink's videos oh, yeah. to do. Those are our most popular videos on our channel, actually, um, to figure out how to do that. But what I have done is I have taken a socialites block and I put it in here. And I set it the same way. So next week, I'm going to show you what I do with this block. And it's totally different. And I'm sure Joanna is okay with it because I have to make the quilt my own and I am just not gonna do English paper piecing. I don't have time in my life for that. I would probably have a heart attack also and then I wouldn't be able to come film videos for you guys. It's just too much. But what I am gonna do also is I am going to start doing these flying geese a little bit each week so that when I get to the end, I don't have to do all of that at once. So this week I took the time to cut my sashing and my borders and start that. This weekend or next weekend, I will start cutting this. And I will probably use one of the Eleanor Burns rulers. It doesn't fit the exact same size, but I will start with that method and trim down with Creative Grids rulers. So that is that sew along. A few questions right here. Okay. Uh, from Jen Juro, is there enough fabric in the kit to modify the sashing as you did, Kimberly? Okay, I don't know the answer to that because I'm going to be honest. I bought, I started this a long time ago before the kits came in stock, and I, I just ordered sample yardage from Moda. I don't know, so that's the honest answer. I don't know, but um, I had a lot left over, but I don't know what I started with because I started this a while ago. I don't remember what I requested. So you would have to draw it out and see. Uh, and lots of people are wondering, what is the name of the fabric in the sashing? 
It is from Figs and Shirtings. So the entire kit is from Figs and Shirtings collection. So if you needed to buy more, I'm sure we have some. And um, to end up today, we're going to show a couple of other things. This is the Make-A-Wish. Can we move all the stuff? Oh, yeah. So this is going for auction right now. I made this quilt on camera, and Nova Birchfield helped me. And we're auctioning this off on eBay. It ends Sunday morning. And I have loved seeing everyone's blocks. Everyone has done a great job. This is a completely free pattern in this size and in a tiny size, like a 12 inch. And, oh, I forgot that. Um, so this has been super exciting and thank you to whoever is bidding on this quilt. So that is ending this weekend. The next thing to show you is coming up, there is going to be another sew along that I'm going to do with you. It's called American Quilter Sew Along. It is hosted by Lisa Bonjean. It will be a free pattern on her website and her blog. To make it, you need an American Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundle that is designed by her and four yards of what you're going to put in the sashing. Lisa will be making four different versions of her quilt with four different sashings. So you might want to wait and buy your four yards until you see her quilts. Now on the very first week of this sew along, which will be, it'll probably, look at that thread. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm doing what you're not supposed to do. Oh. But yes, oh no, we cannot. So I'm actually gonna show you, look right there. I wanted to show you this. I scorched my fabric. Oh. So I don't know what I did, but okay, you can't see it. Look right there. See it? It's orange. Yeah. yeah. I scorched my fabric. So I wanted to show you that I make mistakes too. Somehow it didn't scorch on the front. How that happened, I have no idea. But when that happened Friday night, I walked away and went to bed because I was like, that is a sign <laughs> that you are done for today. Cool. So what I am going to show you when it starts is I'm doing things a little bit different. And of course, I'm only showing you this in advance because Lisa Bonjean was nice enough to give it to me in advance, um, just so I can promote her event and everything. Some different things that I'm doing because my block came out exactly the size it needs to be. Some different things that I'm gonna be showing you is when I make my star or they're pretty much all stars because they're the star of the flag. I am making my outside borders bigger and trimming that down and I can show you my tips on that. I am also cutting every one of these strips wider, <laughs> trimming down after I sew and I don't trim this one or this one until the entire block is done. I also make these wider and trim down. So what I am going to do is in the very first week, I'm gonna sew the block. I'm gonna actually have the star here done, but I'm gonna show you how I make this bigger and how I make this bigger and how to make it the Kimberly way that trims down. So it will be a little bit different than Lisa's method and Lisa will have on her channel what Lisa does and Lisa's the designer. I'm just gonna give you some of my tricks on what I do. And there are 12 blocks. So that is going to be coming up in the next month or two. It will start after the Fat Quarter Bundles ship from Moda. So that's been a lot of fun, um, except for my little scorch. I about died, Lily. It looks like tea. <gasps> I about died. I was like, if that is on the front, because I saw it after everything was done. So there's that. I'm excited about that. The next thing I wanted to show you is my favorite fabric that is coming out in the entire year. This last week, I showed you the bolt of 9900-11, which were smaller circles. This week, I'm showing you the panel, which is 9900-11P for panel. And this one is digitally printed also. So there is the bolt that you can buy by the yard that's digitally printed. There is the prepackaged panel. And we took this, because we couldn't resist, and we did a free pattern for you. So you can take the panel, 
and you can add these fabrics which are the in you could pick any of the designers mm -hmm. they all have 12 fat quarters they're pre-made by moda we picked me and my sister and we made a quilt very beginner friendly and i'm going to show it to you so i'm very excited about this fabric i think it's very original and i love it and here is the quilt the pattern is 50 by 60 and you could, of course, you could change this to any fabric, any thread. Do you know who quilted this and I who made it? I know. Okay. So I bet that Mike quilted this. And Mike is at mylongarm.com. And we used H400. No, we didn't. That's a different quilt. Let me look. If you want to use triangle paper on that outside border, you can use H500 triangle paper and that's how we actually wrote the pattern and it has each of these numbers is the Bella solid number so if you ordered 9900-202 you would get graphite also crystal made it and Mike quilted it yes so crystal um, writes that it's so a pattern so she actually probably wrote this <laughs> and then Mike I can tell that Mike quilted it um, mm -hmm. and it's my long my long mm -hmm. a few other quilts that we have today are this is brand new this just came in this week it's folk the folktale collection by Vanessa for Moda, for Moda Fabrics, and um, this fabric was delayed, but I love it. So beautiful. And in the Jolly Bars, which are five by 10 inch rectangles, so it's half of a layer cake, double of a charm pack, there's always a free pattern in there. So I'm gonna show you the pattern that's available in here. It is called Story Time, and Crystal, who made the other quilt, she designed it. Lori from Customer Service made the quilt and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. And she did do a fatter binding. So she used wider binding than called for, which is fine. And I'm gonna, this is a Bella solid. And I will lift it up and show you. So this is now a quilt kit. It'll probably sell out by Monday because again, we bought this fabric and these kits before um, people started buying more mm -hmm. and the quilting is really nice. So if you went to Mike and you said, hey, I saw Crystal's quilt on um, Kimberly's live stream, he can quilt exactly like this for you. Mm -hmm. And the backing's really pretty. And then the very last quilt I have today, see, I told you I had a lot. If I had Moda today to show you, I would, I would just run out of my, my voice is going to go. Um, <laughs> We'd be here for another hour. Oh my goodness. I need a drink. I need my iced tea. I got to get, I got to get in my car and go to Starbucks the second I get downstairs. <laughs> um, this is Pecan Street, also designed by Crystal. And this is an It's So Emma pattern. And it is finishes at 56 by 56. And we have full color instructions. This is the cider collection. And so the cider yardage is here the cider pre-cuts are coming in a week or two. And Crystal designed it, Nancy made it, and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. And this is of course a grunge. It's really pretty. This is one of my favorite quilts. And this uses H400 triangle paper from Triangles on a Roll. Yes. Awesome. And the backing is really pretty. So that's what I have today. Let me know if y'all have any questions. It's so pretty, right? Yeah. I look at the center. It look at so the center. Much. The center is so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to make this quilt, but I want to make it bigger. But I don't oh. even know if I'll ha I'll be able to get in and grab that fabric fast enough. I know. <laughs> that, right. Yeah. You could convert it. That would be yeah. Yes. That'd be fun. That stuff. Yeah. Okay. From Carol Bush, which club would be best for a beginner to join? Um, depends what you're trying to do. So we have some clubs that are more scrap focused. So like a fat quarter bundle club or jelly roll club or layer 
cake club. Those kind of clubs is more for collecting a stash. Um, we have the Sew by Row Block of the Month sign up. That is beginner friendly, and that is by Lori Holt. That would be what I would recommend if you just want to make a quilt. And if you wanted to just collect fabric, you could just pick your favorite pre-cut. My favorite pre-cut is layer cake. After layer cake would be Jolly Bar. After Jolly Bar would be Fat Quarter. And then after that would be Charm Pack. And you notice that I didn't say Jelly Roll. I do not like Jelly Rolls. Um, for some, they are too messy. They get lint everywhere and they take too much work. So you will find that um, I rarely use Jelly Rolls. And sorry I said that. I probably shouldn't have said that, but I did. I probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I don't like, jelly rolls are not my friend. Oh, I like jelly rolls. Lily, oh. those are for Lily. Yeah. See, they have to make them for everybody. Yeah. From House of Stitch and Stash, I have the Nebula kit, but waiting on the ruler, is it important to have both the Jaybird rulers? Yes, yes. and they are in stock. They should be in stock. Um, we keep reordering them and reordering them. I keep mm -hmm. ordering like so many, and I'm like, okay, at some point, everybody's going to have their ruler, and you don't want to overorder. It's really hard to, because mm -hmm. you could be out thousands of dollars of, and just sit on that money. So I've just been reordering them, and I do think you need the rulers. Lily could answer better because she's making it, but um, I would say yes, because I have made those type of blocks before. For. yeah no she does include like uh templates like the on paper paper um in in the block of the month but you would have to use like template plastic to then cut it out and make it and honestly like for the price of the rulers it's so worth it especially if you're making the giant quilt um but yeah i used all, all i have all three of the rulers now but um you need one of the sidekick ones and then the hex and more and it just it's such a lifesaver it saves time cutting too and it makes it yeah. more accurate especially mm -hmm. because you're on the bias so much in that quilt yes having a ruler is going to help you help it not shift as much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right and then a floor says hello fat quarter shop any book re recommendations with patterns for beginners um i would say uh lori holt's books are all beginner friendly they might they all use corner squares and i think our fat quarter baby is very beginner friendly fat quarter style is beginner friendly um, Jolly Bar, all of our Jolly Bar books are beginner friendly. Mm -hmm. From Sharon Shergold, why doesn't every designer have wide backs for each line? Because they're made in a different country and some designers sell better than others. And so you have to sell us, you have to be able to be a designer that has enough volume to be able to order enough. And it comes from a different country. So, and, and that's for every com company. All companies make their backs in the same country. I'm not gonna say what country it is, but they're all made in that same country. And you have to be a designer that has enough sales volume to make it work. Mm -hmm. Y'all are asking me some difficult questions. I'm probably saying stuff I shouldn't say today. Oh. Right. So you're gonna find your top designers have the 108s. From Teresa, how close to the actual fabric colors do you feel the panel is from the My Favorite Color is Moda? I think it's close. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not exact, but it's yeah. close. Yeah. It's not like color swatch worthy, but it, it is very close. For okay. me, it's just I love all the color. Easy question from Peyton Jolly. Mommy, how are you doing today? Good. What are you going to have for lunch? Are you going to have Chick-fil-A? Are you going to have pizza? What are we going to have for dinner? What are we going to order? Peyton does all the ordering for dinner. Or maybe we could go out to eat dinner. We haven't been to dinner in like six months. Oh. Maybe me and you can go to Sawgrass. And when everybody else doesn't want to go, we can just say whoever, what, what we do sometimes now is we'll say whoever wants to go. And usually that's just me and Kevin. Oh. And one of our kids will go sometimes. Yeah. Oh. I haven't been to dinner though in months. I mean, it's probably been three months. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. since I was at Lori's house. Ooh. <laughs> All right, and then this was just a tip for uh, some people who had been uh, for the members only, and I think just in general, if you're not getting notifications uh, about our YouTube videos, Cyrex MC said that they had to remove the current YouTube app and then reinstall it to get those alerts. So um, super quick, takes just a few seconds to do. And um, something that I saw on a different channel, sorry to interrupt you, no, Lily, yeah. something I saw on a different channel after I think it was like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Some people said, now this was for a different channel because I watch true crime. Mm -hmm. Some people said on that channel, what they did is they unsubscribed and then resubscribed. 
but I really don't want you to unsubscribe to me. That would be horrible. But that's how some of the people were, because her oh. live stream, she goes live every night. And um, so what her channel members were doing was unsubscribing and then resubscribing, mm. and then the notifications were coming in. Okay, because it resets it all. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's what I heard last night on a different channel. Yeah, that is a good tip. Just make sure you resubscribe like right away. <laughs> yeah, because Lord, me and Lily, we need a job. We gotta have a job. Yeah, I can't even imagine like YouTube would be like all these people unsubscribed, but all these other people resubscribed in the same number. Oh yeah. Okay. And last question from Christine Douglas: What is Kimberly watching lately? Oh, I have some good stuff. So I bought Discovery Plus. Now Lily says you can get it free if you have Verizon. Verizon. I watched um, Onision. It's three episodes. It's very disturbing. Oh. And it's very disturbing for somebody my age because I'm from a different generation and a lot of things they talk about, I'm very confused. But it's good to know because I have kids. So I watched that. I watched American Detective. It comes out every Wednesday on Discovery Plus. It's by Joe Kenda of the Discovery Channel. And because I love him so much, I thought, I need to see what he thinks of the John Bonet case because there was a John Bonet episode on 2020 last yeah. Friday. Mm -hmm. And I watched that. So I Googled, what does Joe Kunda think? Because he's from, he was retired when it happened. And I found about 30 YouTube episodes when he did a cruise. So he did a Joe Kunda cruise with his wife and the actor who plays him. And the person who was the cruise director who put it together filmed all of his talking. So I've watched about 20 hours of him on those different cruises. Because I did think about going on that cruise at one point. So I've watched that. I've also watched, there was a Netflix episode called Crack. I thought that was just okay. There was a Netflix series on Night Stalker. I watched that. I thought it was good. The reviews on it are very mixed. Um, so some people hated it and some people loved it. I thought it was good. Um, so that's what I've been watching. And I've been watching a lot of Dave Matthews concerts. I, I watch at least one a day. Wow. I probably, I, I, I watch them from like 1994 and they're like so bad. The <laughs> video, it's like people didn't even have phones, didn't even have cell phones then. Yeah, like a VHS recorder. Yeah. Yes, like their <laughs> video is so bad, but I'm just like, I'm gonna watch it anyway. Because yeah. I think he's funny and he's very awkward. And so like in between his sets, like between his songs, he says the funniest stuff. And so sometimes I just watch for that. All right, we had a super chat from Aaron Dunphy for 99 cents. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you. All right. Oh, and just to clarify with the um, w with us suggesting unsubscribing and resubscribing, we just mean for subscriptions, not channel memberships. Depending oh, yes, don't do that. Soon you were charged for your channel membership. You could just get charged again if you exit and then come back in. So don't yeah. do that. We're, do that. And it's basically what people are asking about is YouTube has changed notifications. Yes. So I watch a lot of people live. They're all true crime. One is every Tuesday and one is every night. And another one is actually every night. And what they're doing is instead of notifying you at the very beginning of the video, they wait about two minutes and then they tell you and then you get in the video and you've already started. And so people are getting frustrated because mm -hmm. Everyone wants to see the beginning of the video. Yeah. So everyone on YouTube is like trying to figure out how to fix what YouTube is doing as an algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to find a workaround mm -hmm. so that you don't miss the first two minutes. Cause I missed the first two minutes this Tuesday and I was mad. Yeah. I was it's like, oh. exactly two minutes like time to it is for when I got notified. Oh, I know it is. Cause mm -hmm. I, every two minutes I miss every night and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I just go back and watch it later. <laughs> and then we have a new member, Stitching is Elementary, welcome. Thank you. Also love the username. Very Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and yeah, the last thing, if you want notifications, make sure you hit that bell. Yes. And guys, have a great weekend. Um, I'll be back next week. Lily will be back next week, and we will have something fun for you. Bye, everyone.